What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and I thought I was going to make a, a light video today and do some Q&A. So I asked the questions that guys, what kind of questions do you would like me to answer on Twitter and the YouTube community and compile the lot around 10 quick questions and let's go through them and just like have fun. How about we do that? So the first question is, what topics, concepts would you recommend learning to a buddy backend developer? So, um, I, I talked about that many times. Essentially, there are a lot, many fundamentals, but if I get a pick one or two, I would say the OSI model is the most important one for a backend engineer to understand because it 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 comes up in every piece of the stack on the backend, right? OSI model and networking stack definitely it just comes up everywhere layer seven understand where your application is understand where the kernel is understand what understand where layer three is layer four where your code can sit and how can you push your code down sometimes to gain more performance and and just understanding that is very very critical i think do you still study data structure and algorithms absolutely yes i only study them or say pick them up when i need them and i'm just now i'm 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 learning more about bloom filters and b trees i'm just diving deep into these two data structures b plus trees to be specific so that i can articulate how the database and indexes actually work and oh anything guys data structures algorithm all these stuff you pick them up when you actually need them understanding why you're doing anything or why you're learning anything is the key here and when i explained bloom further in one of my video i actually show you examples of where it is used in cassandra where is it used in lsm trees data structure and algorithms are, are definitely important but you don't just memorize them for the sake of memorizing them that's just pointless to me right just know they exist learn about them is just education at the end of the day and then sometimes you just will light up and say okay what are the use cases where these are used and essentially apply them that's that's my take on this what to do when you have way more experienced colleagues in your team and you feel like the underdog do you think existing in such team is a good way to evolve as an engineer absolutely i think i would argue that this is the only and the best way to evolve i surround myself with people way smarter than me at work and then the reason is uh, you will look up to them and you will learn something new from them every day otherwise if you are the smartest person in a room you you are just in a wrong room you shouldn't be in that room you should always surround yourself with smart people smarter than you learn from them and and take it as an opportunity so yeah i think i definitely i would always surround myself with people who are smart even in this youtube channel i'm learning so much from you guys like a lot of people in the comment section uh kind of supply my knowledge and, and uh, correct things that are sometimes anecdote or sometimes things that i say wrong or some edge cases that i missed right and well, so i appreciate that a lot thank you the threat of xss attacks or uh, cross-site scripting attacks has been on a gradual decline over the past several years why do you think that is uh the way i look at cross-site scripting attacks is essentially two folds right there is the front end piece and there is a back end piece to perform a successful cross site scripting the fir first piece is the front end piece which is as an attacker i need to bypass the front end checks to be able to inject a script into the page so that's the first thing right and you can prevent that with good frameworks with good programming hygiene and techniques right uh, frameworks uh, the recent frameworks all do this out of the box for you which i can argue is, is kind of a bad thing because most most developers use these black boxes and they don't know what they do and as a result you take them for granted and when you move out to something else or another framework where that framework doesn't do that piece you get screwed right that's why i always say hey you can use any tool any framework you use as long as you know absolutely what it does right this way you even appreciate what react does and and what django does and what other frameworks does that's, that's so that's the first piece just preventing uh, 
essentially sanitizing the, the, the input so that it doesn't have a script, so it doesn't allow it to go in. The backend piece is once that code is in, it's about to execute. How to prevent that to be executed at all costs? And there is the, the this piece is being prevented by this thing that's called content security policy or CSP, right? Where the server says, hey, by the way, you as a page, you are not allowed to have inline code. You cannot just have dash script, close that, and then have random script laying around on the page naked like that. No, you cannot do that. Or uh, all the scripts that are supposed to get executed must be in this domain, for example. Right? So if someone did inject some script, so they bypass the front end uh, security and, and, and the sanitization step and they have a script, they won't be able to execute because the content security policy said, hey, no online script. And even if they didn't put an online script, they put they injected a script to a path to execute on attacker.js on attacker.com, sorry, they won't be able to execute because the browser say, hey, content security policy doesn't allow you to do that, right? So I talked about the XSS view and learn more about that essentially, yeah. So I think, yeah, definitely the browser standards, the back end, and, and the ba back end piece here is, is way, became very good because most developers just uh, spin up their pages and, and their apps on cloud applications like Netlify or Cloudflare, which these CDNs already uh, practices good security backend policies, like they have good uh, content security policies and stuff like that. So we're essentially proxies. That's why I think AWASP, uh, which is the foundation for the security, uh, essentially to, uh, downgraded XSS because now we don't have as many because we're in the cloud on the back end we're good on the front end we're we're also good and we have essentially good stuff all over all over the place so yeah how do you keep motivating yourself while lead code grind and handling personal and professional life in a balanced way so yeah regarding this question um let's be honest guys right we're human beings, so we're not always rah rah and motivated 100%, right? No. So I, I go through cases where, hey, I don't feel like coding today. Hey, I'm, I don't feel like uh, uh, doing this task today. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely go through these kind of things. And so, in that situation, I take a break and I do things that I love. And then, uh, within reason, of, you, of course, because you have to have discipline at the end of the day. But I give myself some break. I do things that I like, and then go back when I'm when my mind is fresher or my my mind is more relaxed, and then go back to the problem, to the code, to the design, to the doc I need to write, and then do it this way. Uh, do you like making videos and why? Oh well, I love making videos. I feel that making videos is a way to show that I just learned something. I only make videos because I just learned new something and I get really excited and I want to uh, simplify this new thing that I learned and I teach it my way. Uh, Brad Traversy from Brad Traversy uh, channel says it very, very elegantly right so like the only the better the best way to learn something is actually to teach it and uh, i can't agree more with them so uh, for me making videos is just uh, became uh, improved my english language i know it's not that great but it, it did improve from 2014 from my first video ever up until today to 2021 i did get better my english did get better and just that by practicing practicing and then at the same times i became more confident speaking small comment on how the family is and how i assume it's a wonderful distraction but it takes a lot of energy definitely the so uh, the question is referring to essentially the the newborn that i just had around a month ago so it's a new change but uh, i think we're we're coping it's a beautiful addition to the to the family i think i have a feeling that now my family is like complete now i don't know with my with my son my wife and my dog i have like I feel like I have a complete family here in the U.S. It just feels really good. Obviously, it's 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 uh, sleepless nights, but uh, it uh, feels really good. <laughs> worth it. Definitely worth it. Which career would you choose if you were not a developer? So if I, if I don't have anything to do with software engineering or anything like that, uh, I would definitely own a coffee shop 
up in Big Bear and do everything do everything about coffee because I'm obsessed about coffee, different coffee beans, where they come from, the different notes. I'm not that great at it. But if you go to my Instagram page, it's all filled with coffee. That's my side hobby. So what I'm going to do is take my side hobby. Which I do this as a hobby, the software engineering things. I do it as a hobby, right? And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my second hobby, which is coffee. I just love coffee. So I'm going to be probably have a coffee shop, uh, chill there in Big Bear because it's like the quiet area there and um, uh, uh, just just uh, own my own small coffee shop or just make that as a career, I guess. <laughs> because I, I think I, I have so many ideas. Like, And maybe it's, this is going to happen, I think. Eventually, I'm going to have my own coffee shop and then I, I'll, I'll introduce programming into it somehow. All right, guys, uh, that's it for me today. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. Make sure to subscribe and like and share this video. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.